Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the Beliefs of Islam with me, Hassan Hadi. Today's episode is the Quranic proofs for the infallibility of the Prophets. In the previous episode, more emphasis was placed upon the rational necessity of Prophets being infallible. Now, in this episode, we shall analyze what the Quran has to say about such matters, given that all some Muslims would like to claim that infallibility is not necessarily a prerequisite to accepting messengers. In these verses, prophets who were among the Mukhlasin are mentioned in conjunction with other verses that quote Satan as saying, By your might, I shall surely pervert them, except your chosen ones, Mukhlasin's chosen ones, servants among them. Or in other verse, without a doubt, I shall misguide them, except those who are chosen, meaning Mukhlasin's, from among us them. It becomes clear that the Mukhlasin's are those who are out of Satan's reach and therefore infallible. Another group of verses mention the presence of divine guidance in the prophets. For example, we granted Ibrahim, Ishaq, and Yaqub, and we guided them both. And we had guided Nuh before them, and from his progeny we guided Dawood, Sulaiman, Ayyub, Yusuf, Musa, and Eharun. And this way do we reward the righteous? Similarly, Zechariah, Yahya, Isa, and Elias were all among us the righteous. We chose men from among us their fathers, children, and brothers, and guided them to the straight path of God. This is Allah's guidance. These are people whom Allah has guided. So follow their guidance, O Muhammad. We do not ask you for any remuneration for this message. This message is simply a reminder for all people. These verses indicate that the prophets have been guided by Allah. Now in conjunction with the verse where Allah states, there can be no one who misguide him whom Allah guides. It becomes evident that none can misguide the aforementioned prophets since they have been guided by God the Almighty. The fact that these verses mention these particular prophets as being chosen prophets and serve as corroborating evidence for their infallibility. They have after all been chosen to guide other people, but they themselves must have already been guided. In addition, the last verse quoted above commands Muhammad the Prophet, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him and upon his pure family, to follow the guidance of these prophets. Clearly for the final prophet with his high status to be commanded to follow his predecessors in the case their infallibility. Otherwise following one who is not himself infallible will eventually lead to misguidance. Now a third group of verses calls on all Muslims to obey the prophet Muhammad, Allah's blessings and peace be upon him and upon his family. For example, one verse states, say if you love Allah then follow me so Allah should love you and forgive you your sins. Allah's forgiving, merciful. Say, obey Allah and His Messenger. If you turn away, Allah does not love those believers. Another ayah states, whoever obeys the Prophet has obeyed Allah. Other verses also speak of unconditional obedience of the Prophet and such unconditional obedience necessitates his infallibility. Otherwise, the result would be misguidance rather than guidance. Besides the three groups of verses we have mentioned, there are other individual verses that could be mentioned to support the infallibility of all prophets in general or the prophet Muhammad in particular. One verse states, he is the hour of the unseen. He apprises no of his secrets except chosen prophets whom he has surrounded with protectors so that he may be assured that they have conveyed their sustainer's message. He has complete knowledge of what is with them. He has encompassed all things. These verses, when understood intertextually, delineate the infallibility of the final prophet. Furthermore, we can rationally infer that all prophets are infallible since they share the same job description and hence must share this common quality. This is for today. Until we meet next episode, thank you very much indeed. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.